Our world is a better place because of people like Mike and because specifically of Mike Sharrett. We are here to remember, we are here to express gratitude, to recollect Mike with affection, with hope, and with love. Mike was fascinated by the story of Don Quixote, and in fact, our first date was a trip to the Royal Alexandra Theatre, where we attended the stage production of The Man of La Mancha. Why was Mike taken by this 17th century Spanish literary character who, losing his sanity, took up his lance and sword to revive chivalry, undo wrongs, and bring justice to the world? In the last days of his life, Mike asked that his relationship to Don Quixote be shared with you. Mike wanted us to know that despite conjoling, intimidation, and against all odds, he stuck to what he believed was the most appropriate course of action, much like Quixote. Like Don Quixote, Mike looked for the best in others even when others could not see it. He believed and thus inspired others to believe in themselves, to dream the impossible dream. Mike told me that he was sharing this meaning of Don Quixote in his life now because he was a teacher and he felt like he was teaching to the very end. Mike was doing what he loved most, teaching, believing, and inspiring in others to believe in themselves, to dream the impossible dream, to reach the unreachable star. Mike and I have been close friends for 53 years, starting as undergraduates at Western in 1963. During this extensive time of working together, Mike often referred to me as the brother he never had, or brothers in spirit. The Ontario Long-Term Care Association tribute to Mike stated, and I quote, Dr. Sher's contributions to research and innovation in aging are renowned. He was a champion of building stronger links between research, teaching, and frontline care, and to remind us all that a good life can and should be lived at every age." Unquote. Thanks, Mike, for all that you have done for elders the world over. I had the privilege of working with Mike over 35 years. And over that time, he wrote many reference letters for me as my career progressed. And Mike, I came to know over the next 35 years, was kind and generous and encouraging, a passionate teacher and scientist and a dynamic leader. And then there were my annual visits to the Sheriff House on Christmas Eve, dressed in uh, red from head to toe, with fur trim and bells ringing. I would rap on the back door, family room door, to deliver a gift to Mark and, uh, and share some Christmas cheer. I'm eternally thankful to Mike for the support through a very rewarding career. Mike's physically gone, but his spirit of believing in others, encouraging others, lives on in us. We miss him. 
In addition to being a physicist, Isaac Newton was a thought leader, and he was able to see things well in advance. And when he was questioned how he was able to do this, he said, I could do this because I'm able to stand on the shoulders of giants who came before me. I was able to tell everybody and the whole world that what a kind of university we were and the difference we were making because I could stand on the shoulders of giants like Mike. We're grateful to his contributions, we're grateful to what he left behind, and we will always cherish, remember, and benefit from it. Rest in peace, Mike. Nine or ten years ago, Mike said that he hoped I would say some words at his funeral. And I replied that I would be privileged if he would say some at mine. Words are so inadequate to express the respect and esteem felt for Mike among us, so I gathered some words from those who benefited from him on a daily basis. Words like caring, dedicated, humble, being present, knowledgeable, and so ready to share individually with those he most wanted to live fuller lives. He was a learner and his influence will continue far down the road. I'm just one of the many, many people who were influenced and mentored by Mike. Uh, one of his many passions was teaching, and he was very, very good at it. His Distinguished Teaching Award in 2008 is a testament to that. And also a testament to that is the hundreds of cards and emails that came in sharing stories of how he has changed people's lives. When I canvassed people in the rest of the community what Mike meant to them, I got some phrases such as, he had such a commanding presence, or I think he was the most respected person in the history of Canadian wrestling, or he was the one person that I never wanted to disappoint. He was an Olympic official, the best referee in Canada, the best clinician in Canada. He was on the, the International Wrestling Association Scientific Commission, but he was most remembered for his impact on others. As referees, he was like the Rocket Richard in that famous book by Ross Carrier. When you refereed like Mike Sherry, you felt like you were 10 times bigger than you really were. If Mike was in a gym and he made a call and everybody in the gym saw it differently, they would say to themselves, oh, Mike must have saw something that I missed. It had to have been two points. <laughs> He inspired us not only because he believed in us, but he showed us the way. He was the one person that all the coaches in Canada respected, so he knew it was possible. As has come through, clearly he was humble. He was complex, he was powerful, he was strong, he was witty, he was kind. He was a complex individual. Mike was one of those people who embraced the paradoxes of life. In fact, he was a bit of a paradox. Mike was polite, but he was unafraid to rock the boat if the boat needed to be rocked. He offered encouragement to people to work in a team, and yet offered encouragement to use your own unique talents that only you had. He was deeply passionate, and yet rational and objective. He could step back and look as if from above on a situation and begin to make sense out of chaos. He was both energetic and calm. That's a hard thing to do, but I think he was. He liked to work and he liked to play. He could be an extrovert, or he could be an introvert, whatever the situation demanded. He was naive and utterly brilliant, proud, and yet genuinely humble. Um, this is for you, Mike. I hope you like it. <laughs>
On a November day in 1942 in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Claire and June Charrette welcomed their first child and named him Michael Thomas, which lasted through his baptism, and then they called him Mike. He loved sports and learning, and he made so many friends. He was blessed to attend the University of Western Ontario in his hometown of London, and later to achieve his Ph.D. at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, confusingly known as the U of W. He grew his love of teaching at Windsor before finding his true home at the true University of Waterloo, U of W. We will never know how many thousands and thousands and thousands of lives have been impacted with positive health improvements because of the research and applications of Mike Sharrett. Thank you for all he did, for others, for all he did, for his colleagues, for all he did, for his loved ones. During all of this accomplishment, he had a love for wrestling and refereeing, reaching a pinnacle of refereeing at two Olympic Games, we will treasure our memories of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
You gave me courage, style, and grace. You gave me this smile you see on my face. You showed me places I had never seen, and I feel like I'm living a dream. You gave the world to me, and I'm proud to be a part of this family. <clears throat> you have devoted your life to my success, and you have proven as parents that you have passed the test. The road is long, and there is still much to go, and you have given me the strength and freedom to grow. You have stuck with me in my darker days, and because of that, those memories get lost in the haze. It is times right now that I will cherish with care, um, because parting with you will be tough to bear. I remember the days when we would ride on the swings. You see, the best time I had was doing those little things. Like the time we played baseball in the pouring rain, and those wonderful memories, they overflow the brain. And as parents, you have given me everything I need. You are both truly a unique breed. I am blessed to have been given this wonderful life that you have both bestowed on me as husband and wife. And I live in a perfect world, it's true. My life is complete with the both of you. And as the pages turn and the two of you depart, you will both continue to grow with me in my heart. Love, Mark. Happy anniversary. <laughs>